In this video, I want to focus a little bit more specifically on interpersonal communication and, and distinguish it a little bit more from other types of communication, but focus more on the characteristics specifically of interpersonal communication in this video. First, what does it mean to communicate interpersonally? And so we really want to distinguish interpersonal communication, of course, apart from other types of communication like public communication and small group communication, but also from simple dyadic communication. Dyadic communication is any communication that occurs between two people. But interpersonal communication, while it occurs between two people and is dyadic communication, it really involves a little bit more than that. It's a little more relational than that. So, for example, um, there's a uniqueness that exists in interpersonal communication that doesn't exist in all dyadic communication. When you're checking out at Walmart, when you're checking out at a grocery store or at a Walmart or something like that, your, your exchange there is going to be basically the same regardless of which line you choose. Now some uh, checkout folks are a little, some cashiers are a little faster, a little more friendly, uh, or, or things like that, but basically you're going to have the same exchange. You're going to, you're going to have all your things totaled up. You're going to, you're going to pay for them and you're going to check out. That's not the case with most interpersonal relationships. There's a uniqueness there. You can't just substitute um, somebody else for your best friend, for example and expect to have the same conversation about the same things because your relationship is different. Um, so uh, interpersonal communication involves a uniqueness that isn't there in all dyadic communication. It also involves a sense of interdependence. And by interdependence, we really mean that there's a connection that's deep enough between the two people that what happens to one affects the other. It's sort of like this, the ripple effect that you see on ponds, right? When you throw a stone in a pond, a nice calm pond, you get these ripples that, that echo out. And that's true in an interpersonal relationship as well. What happens to one person will ripple out and affect other people involved in a relationship with that person. When your best friend or your spouse or your whoever, somebody you're close to, something good happens to them, it makes you feel good, it makes you happy, has a positive impact on your life. Conversely, when something bad happens to them, it affects you as well. It can bring you down, even if it's only some sadness or, or concern for that person, or, uh, or it may affect you in more immediate ways. If your spouse loses their job or something, um, then that's going to affect you financially and affect you in a lot of different ways. So um, there's an interconnectedness and interdependence um, between people in, in interpersonal relationship that's not there in other types of uh, dyadic communication or other types of uh, relationships. Oh, sorry. So uh, interpersonal communication also involves a sense of self-disclosure. Um, so this sense that um, we're going to share ourselves with the other person and communicate with that person and, and communicate or open ourselves up a little bit to them and expect the same from them. Now, it doesn't mean we share everything about ourselves with that person uh, necessarily for it to be interpersonal, but, but there's some deeper sense of we know this person, we're going to disclose some information on this person, again, that isn't there in all relationships and isn't there in all exchanges, um, but is there in interpersonal uh, relationships. All the interpersonal communication and interpersonal relationships also carry with them intrinsic rewards. Now, extrinsic rewards, we would think about things like um, uh, if we're getting money from this relationship or if our friend has a pool that we're able to use. Those are extrinsic rewards, physical, tangible rewards that we can get. But intrinsic rewards are internal. They exist within us. So intrinsic rewards, we mean things like uh, happiness and loyalty and, and just the contentment that comes with friendship and the satisfaction of being in a relationship, those are things that are intrinsic rewards and, and that come from these interpersonal relationships that don't just come from all relationships. So now that we know what separates interpersonal communication from uh, other types of dyadic communication and other types of communication in general, let's talk about some misconceptions that people have about interpersonal communication. Um, first, not all communication seeks understanding. Sometimes we, we talk and we share things, not so that other people will understand us necessarily, but sometimes just to be heard, sometimes because it's cathartic. Um, sometimes we just need to get things off of our chest, and, and sometimes we just want to share something with somebody, whether they even speak the same language as we do or not. Um, not all communication seeks that kind of understanding. Uh, it could just be seeking uh, the, uh, to be heard, really. Uh, not all commu more communication is not always better. Um, there's such a thing as TMI, of course, uh, and that exists in all relationships. But uh, and sometimes the best part of communication is just knowing when not to speak, when to just listen, or when to just leave things alone, and, and when to just let it go. Uh, but more communication is not always better. 
Communication will not solve all problems. I wish it could and I wish it would, but it will not solve all of our problems. It's not the panacea that we hope for. It'll solve a lot of things and it will help in res resolving a lot of things, but it's not going to solve all of our problems. Effective communication is not a natural ability. Most people think, or a lot of people think, that you're just either born a good communicator or you're not. The truth is there's a lot of skill involved in communication, and skill is something that can be learned. Now, some people may have a head start. Some people may have more of a natural inclination toward being a, a, an effective communicator. But the truth is all of us can learn to be better communicators. It's not a natural ability. It's a learned skill. So I want to talk next about communication competence. And what do we mean by communication competence? Well, we mean that you're someone who can engage in communication with others that is both effective and appropriate within a given context. And we need to balance those effectiveness and appropriateness. We, we need both of those things in order to be a competent communicator. It's not so much are you, you either are a competent communicator or you're not. It really exists on a spectrum. So um, we can think of it as proficient, different degrees of proficiency or deficiency in our communication competence, both in terms of effectiveness and appropriateness uh, and how we approach both of those things. So some of the different uh, principles involved in communication competence that we need to understand uh, in interpersonal communication are first that there's no single ideal or effective way to communicate. Uh, there's no one size fits all in terms of communication. Uh, communication depends almost entirely on context and, and that relational dimension. Who are you talking to? Uh, what's your relationship with that person? What's the context and the environment surrounding that communication scenario? Um, so, and, and all of these factors are, are going to need to be accounted for in order to figure out the best way to, to most effectively and appropriately communicate in that situation. So there's no one single ideal or effective way to communicate. As I just mentioned, really, competence is situational. You may have great communica communication competence in one situation and not so much in the other. Right? So maybe uh, in... in uh, for me, it's for example, for me, it's, it's pub I'm much better at public speaking than I am at just making small talk and mingling with strangers. I'm a very introverted person, so my competence is way higher and way more effective in terms of public speaking, where I've had a lot of training and a lot of experience, and, and than it is with um, if you just drop me in the middle of a dinner party and say go mingle with these people. That's not my forte. I can do it, but it's not something I'm comfortable with. My competence is you know, I'm going to be much more in my head about whether or not. I'm doing it right and, and being effective. Um, and, and you may be more competent in one group than in another. I'm very comfortable speaking to groups of academics and, and speaking with people about communication and things. I would be less comfortable and competent if I were in a, a group of uh, auto mechanics, for example. I know very little about, about uh, automobile engines, and so uh, you know my competence there is very limited. So competence is situational. It depends on that situation. It depends on you as a person. However, competence can be learned. I'm not an auto mechanic. I don't know much about automobile engines, but I could learn if I really applied myself. I could learn that, and competence can be learned. Communication competence can be learned as well. It's a skill that can be developed. We can develop these skills. We're going to talk specifically about what's involved in communication competence, and they're all learnable things. So what are those uh, characteristics of communication competence? Well, first of all, you need a large repertoire of skills. You need to have uh, as many, what I like to call, as many tools in your tool belt as possible. As many communication skills. If you were approaching a job as a contractor or in, in construction or something like that, you don't just go in with a hammer and say, I'm going to build a house with this hammer. You need as many tools in your tool belt as you can get because you're going to have a lot of different things going on. Some of these jobs are going to require, require a hammer. Some are going to require a screwdriver. Some are going to require a wrench and some other things. So you need a large repertoire of skills as a communicator as well. Not every situation calls for the same thing. So you need to develop as many communication skills as you can. You also need to be adaptable. You need to know which tool to use in the right situation. It doesn't matter if you have all these tools in your tool belt if you don't know how to use them. So you need to be adaptable and be able to, to use them effectively and ability uh, be able to perform them skillfully as well. So let's say you, you line up this job. You know you have a nail to put in and you have a hammer to do it. And so you've got the right, the right tool and the right uh, skill. But if you can't hit that nail, then you're not going to have much luck driving it in, right? It's the same is true in communication. If you have all these skills, you know what to do when, the next step is being able to actually perform that skill in a skillful way then, at the, at the right time in the right place. Another uh, competence that we need to add in, in terms of being a communication, a competent communicator is empathy. 
we need to be able to relate to others and, and identify with them, understand where they're coming from. It doesn't mean, empathy doesn't mean we have to agree with them or, or sympathize with them even, but we need to understand where they're coming from and be able to put ourselves in that place. This is also really related to cognitive complexity. We need to be able to see things from different perspectives. We need to be able to hold more than one complex an idea in our mind at one time. I think of this almost like, if you remember the, this is getting kind of dated now, it's going to date me, but the movie The Matrix, when Neo is able to just stop all the bullets in, in that bullet time scene and just stop it all and really go in slow motion, not only to dodge the bullets, but to, to move them and, and place them in different areas. That's cognitive complexity to me. The ability to almost kind of stop time and say, okay, I can see things over here in, from this perspective. I can also see it from over here, and I can move it around and, and not necessarily, again, again, agree with all these things, but I can see them in time and space and how they would be, how that person would come to that conclusion and why they would think that. We also need a certain level of self-awareness and self-monitoring. Um, we need to be able to look at ourselves in a conversation and say, this is not going well. What can I do better? Or after a conversation, do a little post-op and say, what could I have done better there? What do I need to improve on? Um, what adjustments do I need to make? Now, somebody who's not uh, very self-aware, for example, it would be a classic Ron Burgundy from the Anchorman films. Uh, somebody who's not self-aware. This is an example of how not to be self-aware. Really not aware of the effect that he has on people and what he's saying is impacting them and not have an ability to make adjustments and think, we want to be the anti-Ron Burgundy. We want to make those adjustments. We want to see that we're making people uncomfortable, that we're saying things that aren't aren't going over well, that we're making facial expressions that aren't working, and so and make adjustments, therefore, as, as a result of that. Okay, so now you have a handle on, uh, hopefully, on what we mean by interpersonal communication, how it's different from dyadic communication and different from other forms and levels of communication, and then also what we mean uh, when we say being a competent communicator, and that's really what we're driving for through all of this, is, is how do we become a more competent communicator? How do we develop these skills and use them in such a way that we can effectively navigate these different situations. Whatever questions you have about this content, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to, to respond to emails and, and hear from you via email, and I'd be happy to, to discuss any of this with you um, that you have questions about. And uh, So happy to help however I can. In the meantime, happy communicating.